Hello, and welcome to the I Can Do program. I'm Dr. Salinas. We've created this program to help those of you out there who have a disability, injured, or maybe just need a little bit of exercise, and help recapturing the quality of life that you once had. We're going to be using the cane as an exercise tool and a martial arts weapon. We're going to change it so that it is no longer seen as a crutch, but an empowering tool to help you have the quality of life you deserve. Thank you for tuning in to episode six of the I Can Do program. We're halfway through this season. In today's episode, we're going to review committed action. Let's get started with the exercises. There are going to be times where we do techniques or stretches that require both our hands to be empty. At those times, what we're going to do is we're going to hook the cane either in our pocket, our belt, or our waistband. And then we're going to go through and do the techniques. Okay. Now the reason why we want to learn how to do this and get comfortable doing this is because I could be getting into my car or carrying something and, and need my hands free, but if something happens, still be able to quickly access my cane and not run the risk of knocking it down and having to fumble on the ground for it. So when we do these empty handed techniques, put your cane either in the hook in the pocket or your belt. We're gonna start with stretching out our wrists. So bend the arm, bend the palm back, place pressure on the fingers so you feel the stretch in through here. Relax the breath as you lower it down. gentle, especially with your wrists. We're just starting out for the day. Now turn the fingers in towards the shoulders. Now we're going to bend the wrist forward. Rotating the fingers in towards the shoulder. Now palm down. Back. Fingers towards the shoulders. And then gently release and shake out your wrists. We're going to now do the single hand cane rotation. Grab your cane in a mid shaft grip, grab your forearm for support, and all we're going to do is we're going to turn the cane, palm up, palm down, palm up, palm down. And we're going to do this for 20 seconds, and then we're going to move back and go a little bit further in the range of motion, remembering to allow these three fingers to start to relax, holding the cane with our ring so that we don't lose control of the cane. And then now we're going to move the hand to the back of the shoulder and go a full range of motion, really making sure to warm our wrists up before doing any major activities with the cane. Now we're going to change hands, go back to the palm, up, palm down, supporting at the elbow. Do not rush this exercise. I'm going to say it again. Do not rush this exercise. You can injure your wrist if you try and push too far too fast. Now back behind the elbow. 
further in the range of motion. Our spine, where as we twist the hip, the heel comes up off the ground. All right, the arms and the shoulders are completely relaxed. All the energy is coming from the hips. All right, this is the twist. Now we're going to move on to the hamstring stretch. All right, we're going to put our feet together. Now I'm obviously turning sideways so you can see me. So you're going to place your cane on the ground in front of you. You're going to place your hands on the crook. You're going to bend forward, keeping your feet and knees together and knees as straight as possible. You're going to rest your forehead on the cane so that you're facing the ground. Now, obviously, I'm turning towards you so that you can, I can talk to you. We're going to hang out here for a little bit. The idea is we're using the cane to provide support so we don't put pressure on our back. If you're feeling pressure on your back, then always back off the stage. Here we're going to push the cane out. This is a modified version of the downward dog. In this position, we're also now stretching the upper back as we're allowing the lower back and the hamstrings to continue their stretch. Now from here, we move the hands in. We grab the center of the cane for support, but we're now deepening the stretch. Breathe. Nice, relaxed, slow breath. Here, we're now going to let the cane hang. Or if you want, put it on the ground, touch your fingers to the ground, just hang out. And then to come out of it, we grab our cane again, we bend our knees, put our hands on the crook of the cane, pull it underneath our chest so we can use our arms and our legs stand ourselves up so that no real pressure is ever put on the small of the back. Hamstring stretch. We're now going to stretch the quads. I'm going to do it standing away from the wall. At home you can have your hand balance, helping you balance on a chair or the wall. What we're going to do is we're going to take the crook of the cane, hook it on our ankle, we're going to bring it up, and then we're going to hold it. Want to try this without holding on to anything? That's great. Rock the hip forward to intensify the stretch. Now go ahead and lower it down. Change hands, change legs. Now, if you do at any point start to fall while doing this activity, let go of the cane immediately. What happens is sometimes people will forget to let go of the cane as they try and put their leg down to catch themselves. So it's time to go down because you're falling or you're ending. Let the cane release from the fingers. That just stretched our quads. At this point, we're going to move down a leg to our calves. We're going to start like the hip flexor stretch. We're going to step back, but instead of the leg staying bent, we're going to straighten the leg and try to put the heel on the ground. challenging, so you work on your balance more, you can bring the cane up, 
whatever you're more comfortable with. Step up. The calf stretch. It is now time to work on strengthening our chest, our shoulders, and our biceps. We're going to grab the cane at both ends and squeeze in like you're trying to shorten the cane. Squeeze it in. And then go ahead and do nice relaxed breaths. Keep squeezing. Now when you release, release slowly, gradually. Do not release this kind of activity fast because you can actually cause your muscles to get hurt. We're now going to work on isolating the shoulders to strengthen them more. We're going to do the isoband military press. Slide your cane through the isoband handles, separate them, step onto the band. You can step onto the band with one foot or two. Two feet makes it more intense. Curl it up to the shoulders and then push straight up. You can come down behind the neck if that's comfortable for you or in front of the chest. Most people prefer the front of the chest because it is more comfortable. All right, you're doing great, keep going. And you're done. The isoband military press, great for the shoulders. We're gonna do the isoband forward raisers. This works the shoulders. We're gonna pick up where we left off from the military press. So we're here in the band, the, hand, the, the canes in the handles. And you're just going to raise straight up and down. You want to try and keep your arms as straight as possible. Just up and down. Up and down. Let's do five fast. Ready? One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Isoband lateral raises. Another great exercise in the isoband uh, arsenal is the reverse curls. You step on the band again, have it through the handles again, and you're going to curl it, but this time your palms are facing away from you. This helps work the biceps and the forearms. All right. So you just bring it up and down, curling with your palms away from you. Let's do five fast. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, and five. Great job. Isoband reverse curl. Let's take care of the back of the arm. We're going to do the isoband kickback. So we're going to take the band, we're going to step on it under one foot. You're going to kind of have the arm you're going to work shorter than the other side. And you're just going to push it back. The elbow doesn't move, the elbow stays in place, and you push it back. You can do it fast or slow. Now changing arms, You may need to change the side of the canes on. Same thing. Step under it, elbow up, and back. You do want to lean forward while doing this exercise to help you isolate the arm. Isoband kickback. In episode five, we did the outside crescent kick. And the same stuff that I said at the beginning of that one, for the martial arts self-defense aspect of the kick holds true to this one. The reason we keep it in here is because it helps the hip flexors. It helps the hip joints. Now we're going to do the inside crescent kick to further help with the limberness of our joints and better our balance. So it's going to bring your leg up and around. It's almost like you're trying to draw a circle with your leg. Up and around. Don't worry about going high. Just get that hip moving. Work on the balance between the cane and your supporting leg. Okay? Incrementally work towards getting higher and higher as you can. Alright, now let's change hands, change legs. Remember, don't worry about going high, just worry about doing the exercise. Get those hips moving. Get them working. Mentally, you go higher and higher as you can. All right? The inside crescent kick. The stance we're going to be doing in this episode is the horse stance. It's kind of like the middle stance, only you're going to step out even wider. 
You're riding a Clydesdale horse. Pushing your knees out. You'll probably feel a little pinching in here. Sink into it, bend your knees. This is not a straight leg stance. Knees are bent. This is helping to strengthen the quads, your bottom, and your calves. All right, if you need balance, go ahead and put your cane in front of you. Focus on a nice, slow breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. You just take this stance as deep as you can, comfortably. In time, it will get deeper. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then as you stand up, push with the cane so that your legs are okay. The horse stands. We're now going to work on an empty handed strike because we don't always have our cane available to us. We drop it, it's in the other room. Something happens that the cane is not in the attacking hand. All right, the palm hill strike is the strike we're going to go over right now. And we're looking at hitting with the palm, more particularly the meaty part of the palm. You're going to curl the fingers in, including the thumb. Okay, and you're going to bring it out just like a punch, but this is what we're hitting with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be targeting as if we're hitting the person in the nose or even the chin. All right, you're just going to throw it out there. All right, start at the ribs, throw it out there. For the other side, it's the same thing. Start the ribs, throw it out there. All right. Of course, use your hips and shoulders to get power. All right. In combination, it's just like throwing a couple punches. This is a great effective way of disorienting your opponent if you need to. All right. Some styles how you do it open fingered so that the fingers will smash into the face to temporarily blind the person, make their eyes water. It's up to you. The palm hill strike. The empty hand strike we're going to learn this time is called the hammer fist. We're hitting with the meaty part of the side of the hand. We're striking down as if we were striking with a hammer. You're hammering in a nail. Same idea, but only you're using the palm or the, the, the meaty part of your hand. And imagine you're hitting them in the side of the head or even the collarbone. And just use your hips, your elbow leads, and you're actually just leaving your hand and arm fairly relaxed, letting momentum, letting gravity do the work for you. If you've ever seen gorillas fight, this is not too dissimilar to their action of fighting. All right? This is a great attack to, uh, to combine with the block. If you block, hammer fist, right? Block, you can hammer fist from this angle, palm up. You can do that as well. Palm up. All right. The hammer fist. The combo we're gonna work on is going to help us protect our legs if it's being attacked by a bat or a kick, and then we're going to strike back. We're going to step back with the leg that's being attacked, we're going to do a low block, and then we're going to come and step forward and attack with a strike angle on number seven, attacking the collarbone. All right, so step back, swing. Step back, swing. Block, swing. Your whole entire body is engaged in this. This is a great full body workout. Now right now we're not worried about being fast, we're worried about being fluid. Do this react, this action nice and relaxed. Change hands, same thing. Low block, swing, low block, swing. Now there will be times that you do accidentally bump yourself. No matter how long you've been doing this, activity, even Grandmaster himself talks about how there are times that you do hit yourself, and that's okay. Alright, just don't do it hard. Alright, that combo is the low block, strike ankle seven. Previously, we went over the attack to the leg that was on the same side as the king. But what if the attack comes to the other leg? We're going to do a reverse low block, stepping back, 
getting the target out of the way, and then strike angle nine. We're still targeting the collarbone. So step back, come forward. Step back, come forward. As I said earlier, at this stage, just focus on everything being fluid. Don't worry about small. And when the adrenaline's going, everything will speed up and become much smaller. Now let's change sides. Step back, step forward. Step back, step forward. You'll notice that it's the leg that's stepping back. That's the leg that's stepping forward when you attack. All right? That's the reverse low block, strike angle nine combo. This combination we're gonna learn now is to protect against an attack coming towards the upper portion of our body. We're gonna do the fan block, so we're drawing a circle, and then palm hill strike. You wanna, as you fan block and you palm hill strike, you're stepping to the side. The idea is you're gonna hit the opponent in the side of the head. So block, strike, block, strike. You wanna go at a diagonal so that you stay in line with your opponent's target, but your target is moved. All right, switching hand, block, strike, block, strike, block, strike. All right, remember that to move, movement is so important, you gotta clear the line of their attack. And then, launch yours. So, defend, attack. All right, that combination is the fan block, Palm Hill Strike. We're now going to learn how to defend and counterattack against somebody who's attacking our empty side. All right. We're going to reverse fan block and then we're going to hammer fist using the crook to hit him with. So reverse fan block, hammer fist. You do this over and over again but it becomes muscle memory. So they block, drop the shaft so we can hit him in the head. Block, Block, drop. Changing hands, same thing. It's block, strike. Alright? Always keep the guard hand up just in case. Alright? Block, hammer fist. Let's do it a couple more times. Alright. That's the reverse fan block, hammer fist. Committed action. Well, this episode focused on that, but let's talk a little bit about what that means. You see, our mind is not just a problem solving machine and a judgment factory. It's also an incredible reason giving machine. So let's say we make a choice to do something that's out of our comfort zone. Well, all of a sudden our mind kicks in with tons of reasons not to do it. I'm too tired, I'm too old, I'm injured, it hurts, I've never done it before, people will judge me, people will laugh. The list could go on forever. Now that only becomes a problem if we allow those thoughts to bully us around and to stop us from living by the values that we've set for ourselves. Living the kind of life that we want to have for ourselves. If instead we take a look at those thoughts and we hold on to them lightly and then just let them go. Don't have them stop us. Don't have them slow us down. We just let them go like any other unuseful thought. We'll be able to move forward, live by our values and have the quality of life that we want to have. Now I'm sure there are times where you feel like the exercises are tough. I'm sure there are times where you're too, feeling the mind's going, I'm too tired to exercise today. But by staying committed to the action, by continuing on with these exercises, by living by the values that you've set for yourself, you will recapture the quality of life you once had and maybe even get more. Thank you for watching this episode of I Can Do, and have a great day. I Can Do!